In this screencast, I will demonstrate the use of Live Path Effects, or LPE, in Inkscape version 0.46. This particular screencast should be viewed as an introduction to LPE, since there are major changes taking place in the current development builds. Although the effects that we now have in 0.46 are usable, they serve as a foundation for much bigger things to come. One obvious change will be applying effects to grouped objects, which we can't do in the stable build, but will be ready for us in the next release. If you're interested in checking out these new features, then please have a look at a development release. I thought about screencasting some of those new features, but then realized that it wasn't such a great idea since the features are still going through changes. Certain things might exist one day, be gone the next, or at least change enough to confuse some viewers. Perhaps in the future, after version 0.47 is released, I can take another look at some of those new features in LPE. And by the way, since I mentioned release 0.47, when it's ready, it's going to be absolutely fabulous. I've been playing with some of the development releases lately, and I can barely stop myself from using them. There are quite a few uh, new things and refinements that I'm sure everybody will love. They definitely make drawing in Inkscape much faster. It makes me wonder what release 1.0 will be like. So let's get on with the screencast. And before I get started, I did want to point out again that uh, everyone should go to uh, Tav's Inkscape guide and uh, look up live path effects. Tav has done an, a superb job explaining uh, LPE, and he goes into uh, detail. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Okay, let's get started with the first effect. I'm just going to draw a square. And I'm not going to really show you guys how to uh, how to apply that to a particular project. I'm just going to I just want to show you how uh, live path effects work and I'll leave the creativity up to you guys, okay? So, anyways, here's my first uh, object and the first thing we need to do is convert it to a path. Okay, we know it's a path by double clicking and seeing that it has nodes. Okay, we go to our path pull down and we select path effects and that opens up our dialog. <clears throat> the first thing that we see is bend path. Okay, so having our object selected, we're going to apply this effect and obviously nothing happens. That's because we haven't adjusted the path. What you'll need to do is select this edit on canvas button and when you do you'll see a green path exposed that is the that's the path that we're going to adjust so all you need to do is pick on it anywhere and push it and you can see that it bends our object I can add multiple nodes Okay, I added a node in the middle, and by adding that node, you can see that those two nodes stay, and I can just move this around. Okay, that's basically how bending a path works. Okay, I'm going to remove this. Okay, we'll delete this. I'm going to start all over with a fresh copy here. Okay, now the default behavior of, uh, of life path effects is it assumes that everybody is working on a horizontal. If you're not working on a horizontal, maybe you're working on a vertical, then you want to apply the effect and select these objects here. Um, original path is vertical. Basically what that does is it takes your image and it turns it 90 degrees, but it also skews it. Well, if you don't want it skewed, then you need to turn on this option, which now it's the, the aspect ratio is correct, but it does scale your object. So that's something that you'll need to scale back down when you're done. And uh, it, it could be worse here just because of the example that I used. Okay, So now when you bend it, it's actually bending vertically rather than horizontally the other way. Okay.
Okay, so we'll get rid of that. <clears throat> Let's see what's next. Actually, let me undo here. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is a pattern along a path. Okay, I'm going to make this a path. And I'm going to make a path. Okay, that's a beautiful path. And we'll make this, we'll hit our control L to smoothen it. All right. We are going to pattern along a path. Okay, before we do that, what we need to do is we take our object, we're going to right click on it and copy. That's going to send it to the clipboard. Okay, we're actually going to write, we're actually going to apply the path, or I'm sorry, we're going to apply our effect to this path. So we hit apply here, and we do a paste. Okay, now, what has that done? That's basically, let me color this so you can see it. That's basically taken my circle and stretched it all across my path that I had drawn. That is called a single stretched pattern. If I want just a single, you can see that it just put one object at the start of my path. Again, single stretched, repeated. At any time, I can double click this and see the red skeleton path. That's my original path, and I can adjust that. You can see that this is the beauty of live path effects. I can change that any way I want. And I'll select my last option, which is repeated stretched. And what that's going to do is repeat, but it's more like a, the stretch command is more like a, an interpolation almost. And it's going to uh, um, stretch from the beginning of my path to the very end. And that's how that works. And I can remove that. And get back. Okay. Let's delete this. Let's have a look at the gears effect. Draw a path just like that. We'll hit enter. And we'll do an apply. This time I'll select gears. And I got to zoom out quite a bit. You can see this. And I'm going to color this so you can see it. Okay. Now I'm going to double click on this. Stretch this out so you can see what we're doing. Okay. And I'm not sure exactly what you would use this for, but it's just a little fun to play with. Um, you can see that I've got 10 teeth on all these gears. If I want to add more. I can go ahead and do that um, and just change my path just by double clicking on it. You can see that it changes the, the ratio here. And that's that effect. Okay. Nothing much else to show on that particular one, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And finally, my last effect. is stitch subpass. I'll show you how that works. I'll draw a path and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's a little rough. Oops. Actually, I'm going to take that last one and delete it. Got too many in there anyways. Okay, 
So let's say I've got a nice little path just like this. I'm going to take that and I'm going to right click and duplicate and I'm going to slide this over. Now the way that this works is you have to take both paths and you have to combine them. Do that here. I've got one single object and stitch subpaths. Okay, I'm going to hit apply and when I do that, basically what's happening is I've told it to add five segments along my subpath. I'm going to double click that so you can see my subpath, okay? Now it's hard to see the, the bottom and the top one because of my dotted line here, but I do have a line that's touching them. It kind of looks like a ladder. So I could go ahead and change the shape and you can kind of see what's happening. Okay. Now I can change number of paths to 100 and now you see I have 100 segments going through here. Again, anytime I can change that and it's almost like adjusting fabric or playing with fabric. Okay, now I want to change uh, the, the stroke path and this is really neat. You can see what it does. Let me move this out just a little bit and I can adjust this. And you can kind of see that it gives it a really neat effect. Now if that's a little too much, if you think there's too many lines in there, you can actually uh, reduce that. Let me let that render. It's a little CPU intensive having so many lines in there. So let me select that and we'll do 70. And you can see what it does. Now I could see myself using this particular effect on a wallpaper if you wanted to do some type of an abstract or something. Um, also Tav uh, explains in his guide that um, that could be used for shading. If you go down here you can see that he's using it for shading on a particular shape and he also explains a neat effect of simulating hair with it. As long as you have a beginning path, a second path, combine those together and it will just flow. Kind of like an interpolation. And that's pretty much live path effects. Um, again, I'd like to show you some of the newer features in the development release. Um, there's a probably, I think, 10 or 15 effects. Um, a couple of them are uh, the new perspective and the new envelope effect. Uh, I think Richard will probably appreciate the new perspective effect. Um, and again, you can apply those effects and it's non-destructive. That means that you can get back to the original and in it at any time. So for example, if you were applying a perspective to a particular image or, or an object, you could go in and change the, the nodes and alter the perspective any way that you'd like. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed my screencast. Thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.